Hi there, I'm Steve Gustafson from Zip Away TV. Zip Away. Yeah, I'm actually doing original programming, real programs by real people for real people like you. So we're gonna feature our Zip Away TV program about the zip line industry and how to run a back end business. We're also gonna feature our Hope of Art puppies and our dogs and teach you about that breed. But we've also got some documentaries. We did one on COVID. We're doing other ones on the adventure travel industry. So we look to expand over the coming years. So we hope you like what you see. Please hit the subscribe button. Go ahead and hit the bell so you get a notification ping every time we upload a new video. And also be sure to hit the like button if you like these videos. Again, I'm Steve with Zip Away TV. Zip Away. So today's topic we're going to talk about is pertaining to the Ropes Challenge Course Zip Line Aero Adventure Park industry. And typically any kind of program is going to have a liability waiver release that participants have to sign in order to participate in the adventure component. Specifically, that waiver should be drafted by an attorney. I'm not an attorney. I've had many a waivers drafted by attorneys, and it's going to say things like, hi, my name is, I'm participating today at XYZ program, and the activities are zip lining, aerial, climbing ropes, bridges, ATV rides, kayaking, whatever your activity is, it's going to be in there, and list to them, ropes, burns, trips, falls, cuts, abrasions, twisted ankles, knees or death are possible. But your lawyer can coach you on that proper verbiage. And again, get a lawyer licensed in your state who knows the pros and cons of how the law is practiced in your state. These online law firms, these online forms don't necessarily cover all of your state's issues. So get an attorney, spend the three or 400 bucks an hour and get it done right. In the waiver, you're gonna have things also like a venue clause. You might have a media release clause. that says you can use her image if you take their picture and you can use it for marketing. Or if they take pictures and video and they put up on YouTube or social media, you can download it and use it for your marketing. But now more specifically, do you ask for health information on their waiver? And if you do, what types of questions do you ask or are best appropriate? There's two points of this conversation. So I'm gonna play kind of point and then I'll go by counterpoint. On point, you know, it's a great thought. You know, if you ask participants for their medical information, do you have bad knees? Do you have any breathing issues? Do you have any special food requirements? Um, do you have asthma? Do you have any heart conditions we need to know about? Then as a program, you can better adapt your facility and your staff and your resources around your program to meet those needs. If someone's got a bad knee, have the golf cart available so you can cart them around and help minimize hiking. If they have asthma or smoke a lot and they come from 800 foot sea level or sea level and your program's at four, five, or 6,000 feet in the mountain, help me sucking air the whole time, help them out, give more rest breaks, get the golf cart for them as well. So if you take care of the customer by finding out their special needs or their injuries, if you will, you can better adapt for it. Makes sense. Now the counterpoint. Are you nuts? Are you a doctor? What are you asking medical information for? And now that you have information about their physical being, what are you gonna do with it? You just can't have it on a file and just put it in a file cabinet. With the new HIPAA laws, if you take that medical information, you'll be held to the same kind of scrutiny that a hospital or a physician office is held to and keeping that information secure and secret and private. If it's on a laptop or a PC, is it bolted or secured down to the desk so it can't get lifted and stolen? God forbid it's on the iCloud or you're on a Wi-Fi server because now if you get hacked, 
Do you have cyber insurance? And do you have a written protocol for who screens the information, who makes the final decision, what is that person's credentials that make the final decision, where in your system it's stored, is it paper or electronic, what staff have right to review it and which staff don't, are they password protected, is it encrypted, do they change their password every two to three months? They have a two or three step verification process. Oh my God, my head spins. You can Google, go look up HIPAA law and all the criteria you have to follow. Very, very few programs have a doctor on site or on salary that's qualified to look at that medical information and give advice. And again, what are six or seven questions on a form gonna tell you when you don't know the whole picture of that person's physical well-being. You don't know what kind of medication they're on. You don't know what that has for side effects. You don't know if they've been stabilized on that medication for four or five years, or they just started it two weeks ago. I mean, this gets crazy. Okay, am I making a mountain out of a molehill? Yeah, some would say I am. But let me put it in a different perspective for you. Let's say, I come on your course, and I'm an old fart with gray hair, and I'm overweight. <laughs> 35 years in industry, I've got some blown shoulders, i got some bad knees. <laughs> Thank God I'm not the oldest person in the industry. I'll let them keep that title. i got some blown knees. i got a bad shoulder. You know, I'm overweight. My body is kind of kaput to a degree because I've worked it hard over the years. But if I say i got a bad rotator cuff and i got a bad knee, I don't tell you how bad the rotator cuff is or how bad the knee is or is a meniscus or an ACL. And you say though, oh, but we've seen people like you, Steve, go on the courses before, you'll be fine. Okay, and I go on the course. Now I hurt my knee. I disclosed to you my knee was hardly had an injury. And now either it's a new injury or it's exacerbated my current injury. You said it was okay for me to participate. Are you now liable? Is it your fault? Now sure, you can say, well, it's my fault, I participated. Right, but I also told you I had a bad knee. You told me I'd be fine. I went on the program and I got hurt. See my point? If that person who did get hurt on your course, and God forbid, we don't want anybody to get hurt on these programs. We're all trying to take care of the customer, and I get it. But if someone gets hurt on your course and they get a lawyer and get all lawyered up, that attorney is going to make you, or they'll try to make you, your program look silly, unqualified, unprofessional, negligent, gross negligent, and impersonating a physician. And they're probably going to win because of that gray area. And even if they don't win, you'll probably settle out of court after you start to defend yourself and depositions and having to produce all this information and lawyers talking back and forth, it's just a headache. So do yourself a favor, really think this through. I'm not gonna give you the answer. I know what I do in my programs. In my programs, we kinda of do a hybrid in the middle. I don't ask them for specific information. I ask them open-ended questions like, do you have any medical conditions that would hinder you from successful completion of today's activities. Hey, check yes or check no. If they check yes, sub-question, have you visited your physician and have they given you permission to participate in today's activities? Oh, yes or no. And if no, third part, if you're not under a physician's care, are you still participating today at your own risk? Yes, okay. If they say no, then they can't go on your course. That's just going to be in your policy. Oh, we got fireworks going on. If they've checked yes, they've accepted it. You haven't told them it's okay. You've actually tried to give them awareness. Front load and educate the customer of the hazards up front. But if they check yes, they're going to still participate. It's on them, not you. Just food for thought. And again, if you're asking questions on the waiver form like that, you're also supporting your marketing campaign and truth in marketing because you want to educate that customer long before they show up through proper pictures, proper video, proper uh, education and phone conversations, 
whatever you're training them up front is, you want them to know what they're getting into when they arrive. That way they can't say, oh, I got hurt. You told me it was okay. I did disclose on my waiver, and I got hurt anyways, and I had no idea what I was in store for. This isn't what I signed up for and bargained for. So if you front educate the client, give them proper marketing, truth in marketing, give them all the information, they've arrived educated on the experience. They filled out a waiver. They've said that they do or don't have any injuries that they've determined with a doctor it is or is not gonna prevent, prevent them from participating today. You didn't have to put yourself out there. Now, going back to the original point. Well, I don't know anything about if they need extra water. Well, you should have water, regardless. You should always kind of run a program like it's gonna be a situation and then always hope for the best. Some would say, well, again, I'm making a mountain out of a molehill. But I've been running this industry, I've been in this industry now for about 35 years, self-employed for 28 of those years, and running my own adventure programs. And I will just say I'm implementing what works for me. What works for you, have a discussion. Sit down with your director, sit down with all your staff, ask them their opinion. And once you kind of have a consensus, go to your risk management team, go to your lawyer, ask them if you're at a program or a university, go ask that counsel. What do you think we should do? Finally, go talk to your insurance. Now the insurance, they're in for making money. I get that. As long as you have some protocol in place, they're gonna say fine and accept your premium. That's a whole other subject, insurance. <laughs> but uh, they're a business. They don't wanna have to do payouts, but they're gladly gonna prepare to take your premium, so be aware. But anyways, back on topic, I hope you found value today in this little discussion, point counterpoint. If you did, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button below and then click the bell for notifications. You'll get pinged when I have more conversation and we post more videos. So again, hit subscribe, smash it, tap it, however you like, and then we'll do more of these videos later on and we'll post them on our Zip Away TV channel. Be sure to check out our other technical training skills down below. We've got knot tying, harness fitting, we've got belay practice, rescue belay escapes, we've got some documentaries in here, we've got music videos of custom scores from John Payne, former lead frontman for the supergroup Asia, who did all of our soundtrack for our TV show. We've got our mascot Anka, we do a whole breeding show about that, and of course our tried and true Zip Away TV, we're on our sixth season right now videotaping. We're editing four and five and coming up soon. So again, I'm Steve with Zip Away TV. Thanks for coming. Hit subscribe and click the bell, and we'll see you again on the next video. Take care for now. Bye-bye.